Hello and welcome back to the Karma Stories Podcast. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today I have five stories for you from the F.U. Karen subreddit. The Karma Stories Podcast is published to all major podcasting platforms and you can also read along on YouTube under our at Karma Stories Podcast handle. If you have a story you'd like to submit to the podcast, you can do so by email at karmastoriespod at gmail.com. All right, watch out for Karen. Let's jump right in. This story comes to us from Dr. Phil Nitwit. I never knew Karens existed in my country as well until I got hit by a full broadside today. So where I live, nobody talks about Karens. Of course, we have selfish people and adults who don't know how to act their age, but I had never encountered anyone who truly embodied the Karen stereotype, until today. This story happened literally an hour ago. I went to McDonald's for some lunch. When I got there, I realized it was packed. It seemed like several school trip groups were there. I just hoped I could find a seat. After getting my order, I noticed a table for four where the previous occupants had just left. Since no smaller tables were available, I sat down. Enter Karen. A woman around 50 years old, accompanied by a 3 or 4 year old boy. They walked into the restaurant looking for a place to sit. Karen saw that every table was occupied except mine. Spotting me sitting alone, she marched over and demanded that I give up my table for her. I looked up confused. She went on, insisting that I stop being selfish and not take up more space than I needed. I explained that this was the last free table I could find, but told her that they could sit at the empty seats next to me. I even began making space for them. That's when Karen lost it. She called me a p-file and loudly declared she'd never let her child sit next to me. For context, I'm in my early 20s and hadn't even looked at the kid, so I was utterly baffled by this accusation. I calmly suggested that her son could sit on the other side of the table while she could take the seat next to me. She then shouted, So you can rob me, a poor old lady? At this point, the restaurant staff came over to see what was going on. I tried to explain the situation, but Karen's shouting drowned me out. The staff, clearly already overwhelmed, quickly lost patience. They told Karen to leave the restaurant. She screamed something about being oppressed before being escorted out. The end? Not quite. Karen literally came back into McDonald's. She made an even bigger scene, screaming that everyone was taking advantage of an old, weak woman. The secondhand embarrassment was unbearable, and I sincerely hoped none of the school kids were taking notes. She screamed at me to give up my table, berated the staff for oppressing her, not sure if that's the right translation, and yelled at other customers to back her up. Once again, the staff had to escort her and the child out. My table was near the entrance, so I saw a staff member standing guard by the door to prevent her from re-entering. Despite this, Karen continued shouting and glaring at me from outside. After a minute or so, the police arrived and escorted her away. I never expected something like this to happen here. I've never heard of similar incidents in my town, but apparently Karens are like wasps. They exist on every continent, and wherever they are, they manage to annoy the living daylights out of everyone around them. I feel bad for the child who just wanted lunch. As for Karen, I'm left wondering what's next. When the police were taking her away, she cast one last glare at me through the entrance. Did I just create a new supervillain? Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Royally Oki. It says, You actually tried to make space and share with other humans. Good on you for that. Hopefully she enjoyed her day with the police. Another commenter down below called Martha Mem said, She sounds completely unhinged. What a frightening situation for both you and the staff. And Equivalent Record 61 said, And that poor little three-year-old with her? Poor kid. Does anybody else think that this isn't that Karen's first time at this McDonald's? I mean, those employees jumped on the situation very quickly and removed her from the store without even really talking to OP. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any context on whether the child is Karen's or maybe Karen is the grandmother. I'm just going to hold out hope that Karen is actually a grandparent and the actual parents of the kid aren't as much of a Karen as she is. This story comes to us from Kate Zero. McDonald's Karen yells at my kid. I'm still a little shaken, rattled, and rolled about this, but I just experienced a Karen moment, and I'm angry at him, but also angry that I didn't defend my kid harder. My kid is nine, and like all nine-year-olds, he has a lot of energy, which he usually tempers in public, because he also has extreme social anxiety, to the point where we have him in therapy for it. He's generally a well-behaved little dude. He says please and thank you, apologizes unprompted when he makes mistakes, takes his hat off at the dinner table before being asked, corrects people politely when they use offensive language, does what he's asked with little complaint. Heart of a lion, demeanor of a lamb. I can count on one hand the amount of times I've had to discipline him in the last few years because he's just not a problematic kid. So my dad and I took him to McDonald's for a quick lunch, and since he has never once changed his order, we told him to go grab a seat on the long benches by the window. I went to grab napkins and ketchup while my dad ordered, and when I sat down, my son immediately said, Mom, can we please go eat in the car? I don't want to be here anymore. Took a minute of prompting before he admitted that he'd been sort of rocking in his seat because he was nervous sitting alone. It's something the therapist has recommended we do, as it's a small discomfort and helps him get more comfortable being independent. The sitting alone, not the rocking. And I guess the bumping annoyed the elderly couple at the next table, so the man turned to him and yelled at him to cut it the F out. And the woman then hissed, seriously, stop it. I asked, did he yell or did he just say it kind of loudly? And he said, no, he definitely yelled, and then slapped his hand on the table. Y'all, he wasn't even at the table for more than two minutes tops. I told him we wouldn't be leaving, but that I doubted they'd say anything else since I was there, so he was safe. When my dad sat down between him and the couple, he eased up enough to eat in complete silence, and the couple looked mildly uncomfortable because it was obvious my son had said something, but I could tell he was still shaken. I chose not to confront the couple because I didn't want to stoop to their level. But then, but then, they finished their coffees, which let's be honest, we all know they'd been camping with since 10 a.m. And the man walked up behind me, jabbed me in the shoulder and said, sorry, but he was bumping the bench and it was really annoying. And I was so stunned. The only thing I could think to say was, okay, well, maybe don't yell at my kid. What I wanted to say was, Yell at my kid again, and it'll be the last words you utter. My dad said, was that guy serious? And I told him what had happened, and I had to stop him from getting up and throwing hands with Methuselah because jail doesn't have a senior's menu. Yes, I get that it was probably annoying, but there were other options. A, say to him politely, hey, could you please stop, it's disruptive, which he absolutely would have done, and he would have even apologized because that's who he is as a person. Or B, wait until I sat down a minute later and say, hi, excuse me, could you please ask your son to stop that? Which it wouldn't have even come to because he was simply antsy waiting for us to sit down while he was alone and vulnerable in an open concept area full of people. Anyway, F you McDonald's Karens, I hope you felt super powerful and smug, yelling at someone a tenth of your age and half your size, with an order of magnitude more social grace. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Idolica. It says, Kids are kids. They are going to be loud, annoying, running around, etc. Especially at McDonald's. I'm so sorry your sweet little guy had this experience. Teach him to stand up for himself. That doesn't mean he has to be rude, but he can't explain why he's doing what he's doing. Maybe educate those old effers, even though they probably won't care. But teaching him now to stand up for himself will make it easier for him in the long run. Use this as a teaching exercise, because that's what this is. I understand not wanting to make a scene and beat the brakes off a couple of old people. That's not the lesson you want to teach him. I think you handled it very well. 
a lot better than most would have. Going to jail for assault is not what he needs right now. I'm sorry you both had to experience this, but don't beat yourself up, you're doing great. Don't let those two old buttholes make you second guess your parenting. OP, confrontational situations are kinda hard to deal with, and we always look back at them afterwards and wish that we had done things differently. But we can't let that have any power over us, we need to take what we learn from the situation and move on. I've had a few disparaging comments made about me in the past when I've been in public places, and all I think at that point is, it must really suck living such a miserable life that you have to try and put other people down like that to make your situation feel better. You know, come to think of it, that applies to the comments on YouTube sometimes as well. <laughs> this story comes to us from Feisty Car 5328 my first experience with a Karen. One day, I was out horse riding. At this time, I think I was 13. Now, this story may be short because I don't have the best memory, but I was on the bridle path on this pony with another woman leading me who owns the horse, a lovely lady. But we were walking along like normal, the woman leading the horse while I was steering. Some people walked past with dogs or kids and did the respectable thing of putting their dogs on leashes or keeping their kids to the side so we can go past without the horse getting spooked. Until these two women, I think a mother and her daughter with three sheepdog puppies. They put them on the lead and we waited at the side so they could go past. However, as soon as they got a step past, they took the dogs off the leads and of course they weren't far enough away and the puppies went to try and round up the horse, who has a bad fear of dogs due to being attacked in the past. So she started spinning and galloping while I was on her. I ended up having to hold on for dear life before falling off and hitting my head. Luckily, I had a helmet and wasn't hurt, but as I came out of the daze and shock of being thrown off a horse, I heard the woman that owned the horse shouting at the two other ladies. The woman with the puppies didn't even care about me, a young girl, being on the floor and possibly hurt. I had to walk back to the stables due to the horse being too unstable to ride until she calmed down. I was obviously shaken up and felt uneasy to ride for a few weeks after. Put your dogs on the leads, don't let your kids shout or wave sticks around horses. This incident could have went much more wrong. The dogs could have been trampled, or I could have been trampled. I've also seen these two people fighting over a horse being on the bridle path, meant for horses, and saw a young, maybe 8-year-old girl cuss out a grown man because her Karen mother was doing it. Okay, I want to revisit the main part of this story where OP fell off the horse and the owner of the horse started shouting at the people who let the dogs off the leads too early. Um, okay, I don't think the person owning the horse gave the people with the dogs a chance to explain themselves or a chance to even worry about what was happening with OP. This just sounds to me like it could have been an honest mistake. They did put the dogs on the leads to go past the horse, and they just let the dogs off too early. Maybe they didn't have much experience around horses. But then the person owning the horse just let them have it, and I'm guessing they wanted to get out of there pretty quickly afterwards. I don't know, we really don't have a whole lot of context for this story here, and this is just one way that it could have gone. But I'd love to hear what you guys think, so if you're listening on YouTube, please comment down below and let me know, was it just an accident or were these people actually being malicious? This story comes to us from Carer3IS. Some male Karens thought they could call us out in a meeting, got called out instead. I was on rotation with my Army Reserve unit a while ago. In simple terms, our unit was responsible for processing logistics requests and forwarding them for booking. This is actually a quite involved process with lots of paperwork, mandatory procedures, and long processing times. However, many units, despite their dependence on our services, refuse to accept this concept, and this more often than not results in why my crap no move on a regular basis. Because they're used to being able to get things done by throwing their weight around, they have a habit of going into Karen mode during big meetings, and an attempt to strong arm us into expediting things that can't and shouldn't be rushed. Usually, their intent is to shout loudly enough that the right people hear it, 
causing those who actually could tell us what to do to force us to go forward with a bad request. One day, during our regular big meetings, a unit took the mic. As usual, they wanted to know why their request still hadn't been processed after having booked it a while ago. We were used to the rhythm of things and proficient with the relevant computer systems by then, so while they told their usual sob story, I pulled up the request booking system and looked up their request number. A couple results popped up, but I noticed that one had just been submitted two days before. This was when the wheels in my head started turning. To make sure I didn't shoot myself in the foot, I made sure I had a good setup. The following conversation ensued. Was your request number this? Yes. And did it have X, Y, and Z? Yes. You guys booked this two days ago. This will not meet mandatory timelines at all. You need to resubmit this with a more realistic delivery date. And the unit was silent. Conversations like this happen more times than I could count, and nothing brought us more satisfaction than having our individual turn to call someone out during a meeting and listen as they either try to come up with some half-butt excuse, get pissed, or resignedly accept the decision. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called VicNaughty69. It says, Ah, yes, support personnel who think they are the reason things exist, and everyone must bow down to them. Another user called Egg Drop Soap replied to this and said, Sweet, this guy wants to do his own paperwork. Another user called ConlyShane25 replied and said, Support is the reason that everyone else can do their own jobs. Have we not learned from all of the military stories that we've done on here in the past that we do not annoy the logistics people because they make everything run properly? It's kind of like the same thing in a corporate structure where you don't annoy the IT people because they keep all the computers running and the business open. This story comes to us from Rogue Khajiit, first ever encounter with a male Karen. Something that I simultaneously love and hate the most about being a rural mail carrier is that you're always alone. This morning, I received a call from a customer who said he never received a package I had delivered yesterday. I checked the shelves, looked up his tracking number, and saw that the package was scanned at the time I was at his stop. I then told him I would look for his package today. Now, 90% of my route is comprised of CBU Bank's cluster box units. Was it possible I accidentally misread the address on his package for a similar one in a dyslexic moment? Yes, I never rule out that possibility, but I know I have dyslexia. It's something I've dealt with since I was a grade schooler, and it's why I carefully read each address. Maybe a minute after I arrive at his stop and halfway through the CBUs, a large black pickup truck pulls up directly behind my vehicle. Being a rural mail carrier, I rarely, if ever, see my customers face to face, but my instincts tell me that this is the guy I spoke with on the phone early this morning. Something to note here, as a contracted rural mail carrier, I drive my own personal vehicle and don't wear a uniform. There is no way to tell from a distance that I'm a mail carrier, and there are no markings identifying my car as a mail vehicle. I look just like any of the other hundreds of cars on the highway. This guy lives a mile and a half down the road from where his box is located. There is no other way to get to his house, no alternate routes out from his road. Yet he pulled right behind my vehicle from the highway, almost as if he was driving around looking for me. Having spent seven years working retail, I immediately go into customer service mode and ask, Hi, how may I help you? He stands a foot away from me and says, I'm here to see about my package. Nothing wrong with that sentence itself, but there was just something sinister in his tone, and the way he held himself immediately made my skin crawl and put my nerves on edge. I told him I wasn't done yet and I hadn't gotten to his CBU yet, but he continues to stand there, unmoving, staring at me. He doesn't go back to his truck until a kind old lady pulls up in her car, but he still refuses to get back in his truck. Instead, he pretends to be busy with something on his phone all while still watching my every move. As I was working, I was checking every box and paying attention to those who lived on his street or had similar house numbers as his. None of them had checked their mail since before yesterday, and none of them had received any parcels. 
After I finished with his CBU, I had to tell him, your package isn't here. But I get the feeling he already knew that. It was in the way he had spoken to me when he first got there. Well, what are you going to do about it then? He asks me, his arms crossed and staring down at my 5 foot nothing AFAB self. Nothing at the moment, I tell him. We can wait and see if one of your neighbors mistakenly received it and turns it in, or you can report it as missing. Now, I'm neurodivergent, and my tone during this entire interaction has been flat, neutral, and matter-of-fact. It's my default tone when speaking. But he starts getting agitated. So you're not going to admit that you lost it? No, why would I? We don't know that it's lost. His neighbors haven't checked their mail. And at this point, I'm 75% sure he's lying, so he can get a refund on whatever he purchased. The other 25% is he either lost it or another member of his household checked the mail before he did and just didn't tell him. But I don't speak those thoughts out loud. He kept pressing for me to admit that I was the one who lost his package. He's following me as I walk around my vehicle and refusing to leave. All the while, the kind old lady is still in her car watching and listening to this all play out. His behavior has long since crossed the line into harassment, and I tell him this. I have not, he says. I've been standing over here minding my own business. I just want to know what you plan to do about my package. So I tell him, nothing. You can call the postmaster. Now go about your day. He then calls me an effing B, hops in his truck, and slams the door speeding off. If it wasn't for the fact that that lady was there for all of it, I'm certain he would have tried to escalate things further. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Negotiation C7008. It says, That's not a Karen. That's far worse. I'd report him to your supervisor and record all interactions with him and photograph his post when you've delivered it. Stay safe. OP responded to this one and said, After that, any parcel he gets is getting a pink slip for pickup. OP, I think I would take that one further because you can actually make sure that they get taken off of the home delivery list and they have to go to the post office to get any mail, not just parcels. Also keep in mind that threatening somebody who works for USPS in the States or Canada Post in Canada is a federal offense, regardless of whether it's an actual postal worker or a contractor delivering the mail. In fact, I've just done a little bit of research and I can tell you that delaying, obstructing, or interfering with mail delivery are all federal offenses. And there is a charge for that. So if you're needlessly holding up somebody who is delivering the mail, you could get in deep doo-doo. If you enjoy daily Reddit stories, I encourage you to follow and add us to your favorites on whichever podcasting platform you enjoy the most. And if you're watching and listening on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video. It really helps us out. I thank you for watching and listening. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.